Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, Here's the first evangelist. Go to my brethren. Jesus sent her with a gospel. What is the gospel? His birth, his death, and his resurrection. In this case, Jesus sent her. So listen, men preachers who don't believe in women, what are you going to say to this? Praise the Lord. It is good to be with you today on Shekinah, and I just pray that you had a great week, and we're going to join our hearts in agreement. I would like to take this time before we start to wish my sister Enid in London, England, a very, 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 very happy birthday. May God continue to bless you, my beloved sister, with health and strength and grace for the journey. God bless you, and we love you. Happy birthday again. God bless you. Happy birthday, Serena. God really bless you. We love you, Serena. Have a very, very blessed year ahead of you. God bless you, and may God keep you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Happy birthday, Ama. God bless you with a healthy life. You're a lovely person. God richly bless you, Ama, and we love you. God bless you, Brother Dennis. May God richly bless you and keep you. May God grant you health and strength. I wish you a very, very happy birthday. God bless you, Brother D. God bless you. All right, we're going to come in agreement right now for the program. Father God, in Jesus' mighty name, today we give you praise and we bless you and we worship you. Mighty God, as we all join our hearts in agreement right now, we are asking for divine intervention with the word of the Lord. And mighty God, I pray your blessings upon your people. Open their spiritual eyes, open their spiritual ears, and their spiritual understanding. Just quicken the word to your people, and in Jesus' mighty name, it will take root and it will bear fruit. And we ask their God in Jesus' mighty name for the blessings of salvation for everyone, dear God, that is viewing this program today, whose families are not saved, we're trusting for household salvation for each and every one. Mighty God, we claim household salvation in Jesus' mighty name. Bless your people with your presence, your divine protection, and health, health and strength. And we praise you and we thank you for the word of the Lord. We thank you, dear God, that you will anoint me and quicken me by your spirit. You will bless me with divine unction and divine utterance now. And I praise you and thank you. As I open my mouth, you will fill it in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen and Amen. Today, I would like to address women preachers. Is it right for a woman to preach? Or is it wrong for a woman to preach? All because... Paul the Apostle made a statement to the church at Corinth. It is taken out of context, and it is taken so wrong, it's not funny. Praise the Lord. Now, I can't speak for other women. I'll speak for myself. First of all, I fear God. And when I was called to preach the gospel, years and years and years ago, this is what the Lord said to me. I was on a very long fast, very long fast. 
And the Lord said to me, Jean, I am calling you to preach the gospel. And I will bless you with a healing ministry. And he said, Jean, I am calling you to prepare the end time bride. And he said to me, the end time bride have to be very ready for my coming. My answer to the Lord was, I believe it is the job of every preacher to prepare the end time bride. And this is what the Lord said to me very clearly. He said to me, Jean, many are called, but few are chosen. I said, okay, Lord, I don't know nothing about preaching, but as long as you guide me and lead me, I am answering the call. The answer is yes. I don't know much, but as long as you teach me by your Holy Spirit, I will do what you want me to do. Now, I have to tell you today, I cannot speak for other women and how God did it for them. But I can honestly say, there are some very powerful women preachers all over this world. Catherine Kuhlman was one of those women. She depended on the Holy Spirit. And I would look at clips. So, so many times clips have been shown on television with Catherine Kuhlman. Different ministries, as they preach the gospel, they would use, you know, they will use different clips, you know, clips of her as a woman. And I guess they wanted people to see, you know, she was called to a healing ministry also. But she's a powerful woman of God. And what I know about Catherine Coleman is she loved the Holy Spirit. And I must tell you that I also love the work of the Holy Spirit and the way he moves and operates. Now, I can honestly stand here and say, if I was not called of God to preach this gospel, I will never, ever come in the pulpit presumptuously or in the flesh. Because I'm not a woman of the flesh. I'm a woman of the spirit. And had it not been for the grace of almighty God and the calling of God upon my life, I would have been a dead woman already. Because there are Satanists that will try to wipe me out. There are Satanists that is sent by Satan to shut me up all through the years. But by the grace of God, I am still standing. And it has to be that it is God that is keeping me. I take absolutely no credit. So, like I said, I am a firm believer that God calls women. And out of all who he has called, I am telling you today, I am one that he has called. And if he did not call me, I will never venture to preach the gospel because I'm not a woman of the flesh. So today I want to address women preachers that it is a message that is badly needed. And the way that preachers handle women, you know, it is so sad. Another thing I would like to say before I start, had it not been for women in the church, there'll be no church. And I'm going to tell you why. You have a prayer meeting, all right? You have a prayer meeting once a week in your church. You check and see how many men shows up. Guess who is laboring? It's the women all the time. I see it in our own church. 
And I can, I can tell you right now, that goes on in a lot of churches. Women are the backbone for the church. How can you say that God does not call women? Now I'm going to clear the air today through the word of God because I believe in the word. I have studied this word inside out for many years and still studying. I will never arrive, but every time I study, I get fresh revelation of God's word. And I'm going to show you from scripture that so many preachers are wrong. And let me tell you, men out there, men of God, you have a problem with women preachers? And you plus, you preach it? I'd like you to know you're, a great in tr you're very much in trouble with God. Repent, and when you hear this word today, I hope it will clear. It will clear and erase all the questions you have in your heart about women. It is a lie from the pits of hell. And I'm going to clear everything today. So we're going to go now and we're going to start with Judges. We're going to go to Judges chapter 4. And I will read from 1 to 9. And the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of God when he had was dead. And the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, who reigned in Hazar, the captain of whose host was Sisera, which dwelt in Harosheth of the Gentiles. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord for he had 900 chariots of iron, 20 years. He mightily oppressed the children of Israel. And Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidus, she judged Israel at that time. Now, I want you to look at this. This woman, Deborah, is a judge in Israel. How can you say that God has not called women. You have a problem with women preachers. And it is wrong in the sight of God. And you better get your act together and start to repent. Because you're preaching a lie. One, because you believe a lie. Here's another big lie. There's so many big lies. And the Lord said, he will send a strong delusion that we will believe a lie. So here's another big lie. God has not called women to preach. If, if your church doesn't have women, you don't have church. Because it's the women that carry the load. It's the women who are intercessors. It's the women that is keeping your church going. So, Mr. Preacher, I can tell you, you're very ungrateful. And I believe with all my heart that you are very afraid. But you don't have to. You just flow with the word of God and you'll be a blessed man. Flow with the word. Teach the word. Teach the truth. Preach the truth. Here is a woman that is a judge in Israel. You say, well, this is Old Testament. Don't worry, we're going to the new just now. And she dwelt, verse 5, under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in Mount Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. And she sent and called Barak, or Barak, the son of Abinom, out of Kedish Naphtali, and said unto him, Has not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, Go and draw toward Mount Tabor, and take with you ten thousand men of the children of Naphtali, and of the children of Zebulun? Deborah is speaking here as a prophetess. 
She was a prophetess. She was also a judge. Now, what she's doing here in verse 6, and it's announcing, announcing God's commands. Not her own opinions, but she's declaring God's promises. Not merely her own hopes or wishes. Today, we don't have that in the pulpit. It's just us. Our own flesh. Flesh, flesh. But remember, as a prophet or a prophetess, make sure it's from God. Whatever you have to say or do, make sure it's God. Seven, and I will draw unto you to the river Kishon, Sisera, the captain of Jabin's army with his chariots and his multitude, and I will deliver him into your hand. And Barak, or Barak, said unto her, If you will go with me, then I will go. But if you will not go with me, then I will not go. Barak is saying to Deborah, Yes, God has commanded us to go. And God has his promises, which are yea and amen. And God will deliver. So Barak is saying, Barak is saying, listen, Deborah, if you go with me, then I will go. But if you don't go with me, I am not going. So Barak is depending on this woman of God. And she said, I will surely go with you, notwithstanding the journey that you take, shall not be for your honor, for the Lord shall sell Sisera in the hand of a woman. And Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kedesh. Praise God. And of course, this is a sharp rebuke, a very sharp rebuke for Barak. Jail, J-A-E-L, would be the woman. All right? She said, God shall sell Sisera in the hand of a woman. And that woman is jail. Now, she said, God. God shall sell Sisera, the Lord. Here is a woman that is being called by God. And that settles it. And that's amen and amen. Deborah was a judge. Deborah was a prophetess. And Barak called on her to make sure that she went with him on the journey. She said she will go. And God said, remember she is a prophetess. She gave the word of the Lord. God will deliver Sisera in the hand of a woman. Now, I'll go, I'll go on. We will turn now to Joel. Let's go to Joel. The book of Joel. And I would like to show you here that Joel brought a prophecy very loud and clear. He prophesied and he said, in the last days, said God. We'll go from Joel chapter 2, verse 28 to 32. Let's read. And it shall come to pass, Joel chapter 2 from verse 28 to 32. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, all flesh, not just men, all flesh, men and women, boys and girls. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out 
of my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion, in Jerusalem, shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Now, I'm going to read 28 again. And it shall come to pass afterward, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, your sons and your daughters. Okay. The Lord did not leave out women, your sons and your daughters. So when this great outpouring of God's spirit comes, it is all over the world right now anyway. So what does women do? Are they going to contain themselves? Or are they going to, you know, let the Holy Spirit do his work? The daughters of God shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall, shall see visions. So how are you going to say women must stay silent in the church? You have a big problem with women. But listen, you can't shut them up because God is God. When a woman stands and prophesies, what are you going to say? You're not going to receive that prophecy because she's a woman? But may I say to you men, you, what happened to you is you are threatened. You are threatened, and that should not be. We all in the body of Christ should love one another with a pure love. We all in the body of Christ should operate in unity in the spirit. We shouldn't have cliches. And the worst thing you're doing is that you're messing with women. That is not the word of God. Your daughter shall prophesy. So a woman stands in your church and, proph and prophesy. Are you going to kick her out? You do the math. May God help you. All right. We're going to go to the book of Acts. And then I'm coming to Esther. The book of Acts, this exact thing is recorded. All right. As Peter preached the sermon where 3,000 people were saved, Listen to what he says, and we're going to go to the book of Acts. We're going to go to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Praise the Lord. And we will go from verse 14 to 18. Acts chapter 2, from verses 14 to 18. Peter is standing, and he's preaching the gospel. The same words that Joel prophesied about, you're hearing the same words here. Listen what he says. But Peter standing up, Acts chapter 2, from verse 14 to 18. But Peter standing up with 11, lifted up his voice and said unto them, You men of Judea, and all you who dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. That was around 9 a.m. But this is that which was spoken through the prophet Joel. And here he's repeating it all. And it shall come to pass in the last day, said God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. Every word that Joel recorded in the book of Joel that I've just read before I turn to Acts, it's recorded here again. Okay, what you're going to do with that? Because I know you're going to say Joel is Old Testament. It's brought over into the new. So what you're going to do with that? 
All right? And guess why it's brought over into the new? Because while they were in the upper room, God, was, God visited them, the 120 in the upper room, and they were, they were praying in other tongues. They were, they were really mightily touched with, by the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says that the wind, the wind just, just blew on them. Praise God. Sons and daughters is mentioned here. And the Bible said that the daughters shall prophesy. Again, so are you going to discredit what Joel is saying? You men, you don't have no backbone, whatever you have about women. Get your act in order. Because you're going to see what God is going to do with women in these last days. There are few women all over this world that God is using mightily. And you need to respect them and you need to pray for them. All right? Don't discredit them because God did not say that. Women will prophesy. God will pour out his spirit upon them. And he's doing that from 2,000 years ago. Praise the Lord. He's a good God. Now, we're going to go to Esther. Now, here's a little woman. And I want you to hear this story. I can't go into everything. You read the book of Esther when you get time. You read the book of Esther and you will see it for yourselves. So we're going to go to Esther chapter 4, and we will go from verse 15 to 17. Then Esther bade them, return Mordecai this answer. Go gather together all the Jews who are present in Shushan and fast you for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go into the king. Will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law? If I perish, I perish. Now, this noble woman here resolved, if necessary, to sacrifice her life for the sake of the people. Now, listen what she said If I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. Now, we know that in Jesus' mighty name, this woman, Esther, I'm going to show you from another scripture here. Let's go to Esther chapter 8. And we will go from verse 3. Listen what's going on. And Esther spoke yet again before the king and fell down at his feet and besought him with tears to put away the mischief of Haman, the Agatite. Haman was very, very wicked. And his, de and his device that he had devised against the Jews and the king held out the golden scepter toward Esther. So Esther arose and stood before the king and said, if it please the king, if I have found favor in his sight and the king seemed right before the king, and the thing seem right before the king, and I be pleasing in his eyes. Let it be written to reverse the letters devised by him, and the son of Hamed, Hamed, Hamedatha, the Agatite, which he wrote to destroy the Jews, which are in all the king's provinces. For how can I endure to see the evil that shall come unto my people, or how can I endure to see the destruction of my kindred? All right. You say, well, Pastor Jean, I don't understand because you're not reading everything. Let me go over this in a praise form. King Hasharus, you have King Hasharus. You have Esther. You have Mordecai, which is Esther's uncle. You have Haman, very wicked. And of course, he works for the king, a right hand. And they all plotted to destroy all the Jews. Now, Esther as a queen, like I said, you can read all of Esther for yourself. She decided, well, listen, I am not going to sit back and let my people be destroyed. To make a long story short, 
to go into the king's court. Like how Esther did. She would be a dead woman. You can't do that. She would have been a dead woman. But listen to this woman, what she said. She said, I am going to save my people, the Jews. And I'm going to go to the king and ask him to reverse the decree that was made to destroy all my people. And she went before the king. And she cried with tears. And she said, she's going to go. And she said, if I perish, I perish. She was willing to die for her people. This is a woman. And she had the guts to go before the king. Which, of course, that should not be. Because she would be a dead woman. Instead, he stretched out his scepter before her. And he even tell her, ask for whatever. So what are you going to do with that? It's a woman that stood in the king's court and pleaded with the king to save the Jews. And of course, Haman, the wicked one that was working with, you know, King Hasheros, he was hanged. The gallows he and his wife made for Mordecai is the same gallows that will finish his life. So he was hanged instead of Mordecai, and God heard Esther's plea. And the Jews were saved, and God blessed them. Praise the Lord. Now we're going to go to Mary. Mary is the first woman preacher. She's the first evangelist, as a matter of fact. And that is Mary Magdalene. We are going to go to John, the book of John. And we're going to go to chapter 20. Let's hear what it says. Chapter 20, and it spoke about the resurrection. So we're going to go to chapter 20 from verse 1. The first day of the week comes Mary Magdalene, John 20 from verse 1. When it was dark unto the sepulcher, and sees the stone taken away from the sepulcher. Then she ran and came to, some, to Simon Peter and to the other disciples whom Jesus loved. And said unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth, and that other disciple which is John. We know Jesus loved John. And came to the sepulcher, so they ran both together, and the other disciple John did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulcher. So John arrived before Peter, and he stooping down, looking in, saw the linen clothes, yet went he not in. Then came Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulcher and saw the linen clothes. And the napkin that was about his head and lying, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away unto their own home. Mary stood without the sepulchre weeping, and as she wept, she, stood, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher and saw two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why do you weep? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. When she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why do you weep? Whom do you seek? She is supposing him to be the gardener. She thought that Jesus was the gardener. And she said, and he said unto her, and she said unto him, Sir, if you had borne him hence, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary? She turned herself, and she said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not. 
for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, here's the first evangelist, go to my brethren. Jesus sent her with a gospel. What is the gospel? His birth, his death, and his resurrection. In this case, Jesus sent her. So listen, men preachers who don't believe in women, what are you going to say to this? She's a woman, and Jesus sent her with the message, go tell them. All right? Jesus said unto her, go tell them. Go to my brethren, verse 17, and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. Praise God. Now, I want you to read this chapter when you get time. And you will see here, Jesus himself sent this woman of God. Sent Mary with a message. And she said to them, I have seen the Lord. He revealed himself to a woman. And she went with the message and said, I have seen the Lord. So here is it. Mary Magdalene was the first woman preacher that Jesus sent with a message. What are you going to do with that? You do the math. You figure that out. All right, we're going to move on. We're going to go now to the biggest problem with the church. The biggest problem with the church is Paul is preaching to the church at Corinth. And I'm going to tell you right now, this church had multiple problems. It was one problem to the next. So let us first go to 1 Corinthians, and we will go to chapter 11, 1 Corinthians 11, 30 to 34, and we're going to read. 1 Corinthians 11, 30 to 34. Now here is the Lord's Supper, all right? And Jesus is going to address some stuff. Paul is going to address some stuff here. And he's going to make it clear to them what they should be doing. So let's go from verse 30. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. This is the Lord's Supper. Now listen, he's going to address them. Wherefore, my brethren... When you come together to eat, tarry one for another. If any man hunger, let him eat at home, that you come not together, that you come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. Now we can see clearly here, this is the Lord's table. This is the Lord's Supper. And Paul is telling this church at Corinth, brethren, when you come to church, eat at home. You don't have to be eating here. That there has to be order. On our churches today, we have our Ken fried chicken, our Kentucky dinners, and all we do is eat. That's it. Paul is saying, 
He said, if you're hungry, eat at home. So this church had a, a problem with food. This is carnality here to the highest. And he is addressing this right after the Lord's Supper. Isn't that something? He's addressing this. Okay, we'll go. We'll go on. We're going to go to another scripture, 1 Corinthians 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and listen what it says here. 33 to 38. All right? So, you will see here that this portion of scripture is taken out of context. You need the Holy Spirit to reveal God's word to you. Because you sound like an idiot. You men preachers, those of you who don't believe in women preachers, don't listen, don't get me wrong. There are some men. They are, they they just, you know, they just use their women in the church to preach, to teach, and do everything. And I take my hats off to them. They have some scruples, and they know the word. To you men who don't believe that God called women because of this one scripture here that I'm now going to read, let's get, let, let's get this now in order. 1 Corinthians 14, 33 to 38. Listen to what it says. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. As in all churches of the saints, let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. This has nothing to do with God saying that women mustn't preach or teach. Churches at that time, in those days, they have a big, big problem. This church at Corinth have a big problem. And because they're talking in the church, they want their husbands to help them out, Paul is going to fix them. But they are commanded to be under obedience as also the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. Paul is making it very clearly here that women have a big problem in the church at Corinth. They were very carnal. And it is very clear here that Paul is saying, you have questions, ask your husbands at home. How are you going to take this out of context and say that God didn't call women? You figure that one out. If they will learn anything, verse 35, let them ask their husband at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. So you take this now out of context, and you're saying women should not preach. They were very, very carnal in the church. And they want to talk just like today in church. While the preacher is preaching, there's no reverence. There's no respect for the Holy Spirit. And all we do, we even gossip in church. You sit in church and you chew your gum. No respect for the Holy Spirit. You will never see a gum in my mouth in a service. If I'm preaching... There's not gum one side here, stuck up under my dentures or whatever. The devil is a liar. Once I'm preaching, God is good. I may come in with a mint, but before I hit the pulpit, it's gone. So listen what Paul says. For it is a shame for women to speak in the church. All right. What? Came the word of God out from you? Or it came unto you only? 
If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things which, that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. But if any man be ignorant, let him still be ignorant. This is sheer ignorance. Get your theology together and get it straight. The church at Corinth have a big problem. Whether men were meeting you know, separately and women were meeting separately, and when they came together, you know, they, 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 the women were asking their, 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 their husband's question, Paul had to shut them up. And he said, clearly, you have questions, ask your, ask your husbands at home. For the shame for the women to be, gossip, you know, asking questions in church. He didn't say, Paul didn't say here that women shouldn't preach. This is the church at Corinth have a problem. A big one with carnality. So, women must stay silent. Uh, like I said, I can't speak for other women. Are you going to say, God didn't call me? Praise the Lord. All right, you go and ask him if he called me or not. Your backboneless, spineless preachers out there, go ask. Get it together. The devil is a liar. Why is it you can't understand the scripture? This word is forever settled on earth and in heaven. So, is God partial? God is not like that. Now, if God called my husband to preach, I have to step aside because I have to respect him and his call. I cannot usurp authority over him. I have to respect my husband. But my husband is not called to preach the gospel. I am. And I don't disrespect my husband in any way. I give him very, very great respect in our home. And many times he speaks, I am very, very silent. Whether he's right, whether he's wrong, whatever, I'm very silent. God is a good God. And I have great respect for my husband, but he's not called to preach. I am. So what are you going to do with that? He's a good God. Now, again, this church was very carnal. They had a lot of problems. And we're not finished yet with this church. Now, let us go to... 1 Corinthians, and we will go to chapter 2. All right? 1 Corinthians, no, chapter 3, sorry. 1 Corinthians, chapter 3. Listen what, what, what Paul is saying to this church. Listen carefully. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes. Now, I don't want you to try to interpret Paul here wrong. It's not that he speaks to them in carnality. Paul is a very spiritual man, and he has sung doctrine. Paul knows what he's about. He's very intelligent. What Paul is trying to say to them here, that brethren... I desire for you to have, you know, deep spiritual understanding. I desire to feed you with meat. In other words, the strong word. But Paul is saying to them, you got to feed them with milk because they're little babies. They're not growing. God wants us to grow. He wants us to grow from strength to strength. He wants us to grow from glory to glory. 
And they have a big problem. Today, look how much we have in the church. We fight against each other. We have so much junk in us about each other. We don't want to forgive. We don't want to see our brethren through the eyes of Christ. They commit a sin, we're ready to push them right down in hell. That is not right. The homosexuals and the lesbians out there, we're ready to kill them. You can't do that. You have to love those homosexuals. You have to love those lesbians with the love of Christ. But you hate their sin. The Satanists, we hate what they do. We don't like what they do. They serve the devil and get their orders from Satan to destroy. They're agents of the devil. Do we hate them? You can't hate them. You have to love them with the love of Jesus and pray for them. Praise God. Look at how many religions are out there. Revelation, I think, is chapter 19 called the religious world, the great whore. So what are you going to do? You're going to hate Muslims? You're going to hate Hindus? You're going to hate the atheists? You're going to hate the agnostics? What are you going to do? You're going to hate the Nazarenes? Are you going to hate the Catholics? Are you going to hate them? You can't hate anybody. You got to love them all with the love of Jesus. But you have to pray for them. The devil is a liar. I may preach hard. But I'm going to tell you something. I don't have one, one little bit ounce of hate in this heart for anybody or anything. I love all people, all races, all creeds, all color. I don't like people's sin, but I love all people. I love them with the love of Christ. Some of you won't have homosexuals come to your church. I can't wait for this church to be filled with homosexuals. And I dare one person point their finger at them. They have souls and they need the Lord. You can't hate them. But no, we don't look at ourselves and look how much junk we have in us. But we, we, we're just ready to list them. You know, when they're doing, when they sin or they do something wrong, push them straight in hell. You don't do that. If you were to see the junk in you, you won't have time to be critical. You got to be patient. You got to love all men. This Bible says you got to love. And if you don't have love, you have nothing. This church have a big problem with carnality. And listen what Paul said to them. He said, I could not speak unto you as spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. Why Paul is saying that? He wants to give them spiritual food. He wants to feed them that they can grow. But because of their carnality, he had to address it this way. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. In other words, because of your own carnality. For hitherto you were not able to bear it. Neither yet you know, yet now are you able. They're still functioning in spiritual immaturity in this church. They don't want to go further. They think they're saved and washed in the blood. That's it. But they're very carnal. Can any carnal thing enter into heaven? When you're carnal, you're fleshly. And he's trying with them. Listen what he says in verse 3. For you are yet carnal. Praise the Lord. They don't place their faith in Christ totally. They place their faith most times in themselves and men. 
They have a big problem in this church. You can't put your faith in man. Man will fail you, but God will never fail. For whereas there is among you envying, watch this. Doesn't it sound like the modern church today? Look at all the problems this church at Corinth have. All the women in the church making problems, and men too, causing problems. And then you're going to take this out and say, God didn't call women. You're right. If you have some guts, you better reverse your preaching and you better repent. Because you're teaching your people and preaching to them wrong stuff. Your theology is messed up. Praise God. For whereas, verse 3, there is among you envying, strife, divisions. Are you not carnal and walk as men? Praise God. Are you not carnal and walk as men? In other words, you're behaving like like the unconverted. It's like you're not saved and washed in the blood. For while one said, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? This is a stuff that has wrecked many churches today. If the preacher doesn't show up, nobody wants to come to church. If the preacher is on vacation, nobody wants to come to church. Because they don't want to hear nobody else. That is wrong. You got to love all people. You have to love all people. And if you don't have love, you have nothing. This church had a huge problem. So you get it right. And get it right quickly. So listen, after communion, Paul addressed them, eat at home. Don't eat in the church, eat at home. He's saying here, you women, wait till your husband go home to ask questions. Don't ask questions at church. Because of that, you would saying, okay, God didn't call women to preach. Stupid. Listen. You need a Holy Ghost. You're blind like a bat. And listen, the blind leading blind. Your doctrine is wrong. Get it right. The Bible says you can't add to God's word or take away. Or else the plagues of life will be added to you. Paul is saying to them, you're too carnal. I can't feed you strong meat, which is the word. Feed them strong meat as to take them to, a, to another higher level. So this church have a big problem. All right? God has called women. Catherine Kuhlman is gone. But she is a very powerful woman of God. Are you going to say God didn't call her? If I were to put a title to this message, I would like to entitle it Repent, for God has called women to preach and teach. Get it right. Take my advice. God is a good God. Has God called women? Yes. And it's real. And you're looking at one. Praise his holy name. Let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, may you help all our preachers who teaches their flock that women have to stay quiet in the church. Father God, what foolishness. My God, I pray that our preachers will repent 
And our congregations who believe just lie. There are Christians out there who believe because they were taught that women must be quiet. May you forgive them. And I pray God that they will find it in their heart to repent. Because God, you have called women. You have chosen women. And women are the backbone of the church. And today I thank you for every woman preacher on the face of this earth. I thank you for them. Let them stand strong. And God, you continue to anoint them and use them mightily for your glory and your honor. Mighty God, in Jesus' name, today I praise you and I thank you that it's a glorious honor, mighty God, to be called by God to preach the truth and nothing but the truth. Praise his holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let there be repentance all over for this dangerous lie of the devil. Bless your people now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you and love you.